I'm not gonna make a million dollars. No. Yes. What? Yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, you guys. So, as of now, it is August 1st, and I have launched. And I'm sorry for this computer noise in the background, but I am going to make my uniquely geeky chic story in the form of a documentary and yeah peace uniquely geeky chic llc certificate of The shipping labels for the Dymo printer is here. Here it is. Oh. Another new one. Oh, that's beautiful. It's the black woman. Yay! Beautiful. Oh, it looks so good. It's beautiful. I ordered these mailers. It's only up from here. And yeah. I know you guys don't watch the full video, so I am here to tell you that this is a part of the launch of my business, Uniquely Kiki Chic, an online decor store featuring my original accessible poetry centered around our multifaceted heritage and reality. So go get you some authentic pieces for your place at www.uniquelygeekychic.com links in the description and the comments roll film <laughs> one of the most terrible things is that in fact whether like it or not i am an american my school really was the streets of new york city my frame of reference was um george washington and john wayne but I, you know, I was a child, you know, and the child of his eyes in the world, he has to use what he sees. There's nothing else to use. And you are formed by what you see, the choices you have to make, and the way you discover what it means to be black in New York. And then throughout the entire country. As a child, he was very, very observant. Very serious child. You always knew, you just knew stuff as a child. You wouldn't like none other child. You just always, let's say always concerning. You was concerned about other people. You've always been concerned about other people's feelings. Being a little child, that's amazing how I got introduced to poetry. Um, so around seventh, eighth grade, which is 12, 13 years old, I started writing poetry and I used it as a coping mechanism to deal with troubles in my home life. And, you know, despite teachers telling me that I was good at writing, they could see books for me. Like my fourth or fifth grade English professor, she wants to nominate me for uh, Georgia Young Writers. And then actually my eighth grade English teacher, <laughs> she also said she could see books from me. But despite all of that, I used it as a hobby. I used it as a coping mechanism and I didn't think too much of it. And I didn't think too much of it all the way up to my senior year of high school because also up until then, I was geared toward the medical field. 
I thought I was going <laughs> to be somebody's therapist, somebody's psychiatrist, somewhere in that sphere. And so I just put writing on the back burner and yeah, and even in high school, my 10th grade English teacher also said that <laughs> she could see me being an author and that I should keep writing and writing, but I just kept denying, denying this gift that I had because I was scared and I don't know why I was scared. Yeah, um, but I get to my senior year of high school and I have a crisis. I realized that I would not really be happy in the medical field um, and I really had a heart to heart of course over several months <laughs> on what to do and I think I've, I always knew but it was English. It was creative writing poetry and so I prayed and prayed about it and that's the path that I set on and so I went to college as an English major with creative writing concentration and things were good I saw the the rewards from my path you know I even on the collegiate level I have professors tell me how good my writing were, was my poems were and so that was really rewarding and really kind of validated for me that I was on the right path and so when I told my extended family what my major was in college when I came home from those breaks, you know, on my mom's side, they didn't, they didn't support me at all. And that really, really hurt. Um, I wasn't going to stop anyway, but hearing as a, as an 18, 19, 20 year old hearing, oh, what, what's your major? English. You want to be a teacher? You're not going to make any money at that. Creative writing? What's that? What? You know, just hearing that is really discouraging. And so I stopped coming around. And, but my dad's side, they were a lot more accepting than encouraging. But I say that to say for all my other creatives, black, young black creatives, don't let your family stop you from doing what you know in your heart you want to do okay so back to the story um <laughs> and so i i was dealing with that kind of like form of rejection from my family or just like ostracization um yeah it was discouraging, but like I said, it wasn't going to stop me, and it didn't. And so I get to my senior year of college, which was this past year. You know, I graduated class spring 2020. <laughs> Lucky us. Um, yeah, and I had a bit of a crisis because I had gotten this really wonderful job at the college via... Dr. Veronica Womack, she gave me this job, my very first job. I didn't have to be, physically be anywhere. I could do it from the comfort of my own dorm room and I could do it on my own time. And it was, I had gotten a taste of that. And I knew that I did not want to work for anyone else and plus, my last semester, we had been learning about capitalism, and I would rather just put my energy into myself and make something that would create generational wealth for my future descendants, you know? And so I racked my brain for an idea, an avenue that would let me create and be the poet that I am, but would also generate some kind of income for me so this last few
few weeks of my college career. I'm thinking, I'm thinking every day, just oh, hours upon hours. What can I do? What can I do? And so <laughs> I got the idea. So why not put my poems in a mason jar? Let's see if that'll work. And I you know, cut cut the little cut the poem off of the paper and then stick it in a jar and then maybe put some pebbles at the bottom and it worked. It worked. And so I created my first prototype probably in February of 2020 this year. And then I put it on the back burner <laughs> until I graduated in May. And then over the course of the summer, I've been working, working really hard to create the products that we have today and that's basically it but i want to stress that uniquely geeky chic is not just about um me having income and me not working for the man. I I thoroughly enjoy coming up with these little messages and um, quotes and poems for you all <laughs> to put in your living spaces because it is so important to resonate with what's in your surroundings you know when you look at a poem jar of mine or a future quote to hang a poem to frame i want you to be inspired i want you to feel like someone has seen you i want you to feel seen and heard and so that's what uniquely geeky chic is all about I just thank you so much. This was the face, the face behind the founder. I like that. <laughs> I like the alliteration of the F. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. And I like to give special thanks to my mom for always being so willing to help me and my daddy for always being my business coach and my brother for buying me a camera all the way from a different country and my boyfriend for standing out there in the hot sun taking pictures of me that you'll see on the site www.uniquelygeekychic.com links in the description and the pinned comment and peace you guys go get you some road to a millie